topological string S duality and resurgence. Okay, thank you. Um, and uh, that's all that thank the uh, organizers for um, putting together this wonderful workshop and for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak here. Um, so it's wonderful to be here and wonderful also to see lots of you all, maybe for the first time after the pandemic. Um, so what I want to talk about uh, today, so I'm going to spend uh, um, a good amount of the motivation uh, telling you how these words um, relate to the main theme of the workshop, namely um, first theory and mirror symmetry and uh, Calabial moduli and their uh, physics. Um, so this is based, um, so the s part, uh, which will come very late in the talk and maybe uh, only uh, in an incomplete way. So this is work, uh, based on work in, um, work in progress. <clears throat> but then most of, of the um, rest of the talk will be based on um, these uh, papers in reverse uh, chronological order. So this is with a uh, paper with uh, Otto Hollands um, from Harry Scott in Edinburgh and Ivan Kuli from uh, Hamburg uh, from last year. And uh, as well as a paper before with uh, Arpan uh, Saha, who's um, now in Madrid. And uh, your questioner and Ivan Kuli from uh, Hamburg as well as two uh, papers of mine um, uh, before that. So of course there is um, the very last uh, topic that uh, ties and bids on works of many other people. So let me just um, mention uh, for this talk. Uh, so my uh, so these two papers were heavily influenced by a program of uh, Tom Bridgman of the last uh, five, uh, five, six years. Um, and uh, some uh, of the uh, aspects of uh, these two papers uh, were heavily building on the work of Garofalidis and Kashaya. There, I'm going to talk about difference equations, and uh, part of this is also uh, based on uh, or uh, very similar to work of uh, Iwaki, Koita, and uh, Takei. And uh, of course, the resurgence part uh, for what I'm going to talk about there, there was uh, earlier work by Tatsuki and, and uh, Schiappa, and there has been a lot of work on um, non perturbative topological string theory by. Uh, especially Hatsuda, Grassi, and Mourinho, but also earlier work of uh, Hatsuda, Moriyama, Mourinho, and Kuyama. And uh, part of the story ties uh, to uh, older work of Aganadish, like uh, them, Mourinho, and uh, Vafa, as well as some uh, more well, later uh, revisiting of the theme uh, that was uh, laid out here by almost uh, the same uh, authors, except that uh, to be as uh, here. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, K is uh, Daniel Taper, so D is still like up, but D is uh, near on the chain. And uh, part of the story, uh, especially of uh, that paper, also relates uh, to recent work from last year of uh, Alvar Grassi, General uh, Yu, uh, uh, Howe, and um, Andy Knight. Okay, so uh, this is just a, a quick. Uh, Overview. So, as I mentioned, so I'll be spending uh, a lot of time on the motivation introduction, and I'll just uh, spending less and less time uh, as we progress uh, to talk about. I hope to give you some idea of uh, where this is going. Okay. So, the motivation, and let me also use the motivation in order to tie this to the theme of the workshop. So, we had already seen in Sutro's uh, talk. Um, so, we had uh, a quick uh, review of mirror symmetry. So, let me just uh, record that uh, sort of early indications of mirror symmetry is that there is a mirror <coughs> symmetry on the Hodge diamonds um, of uh, Calabial threefolds. So X and X and check would be a pair of uh, Calabial uh, threefolds such that their uh, Hodge numbers uh, interchange. So, uh, so this was an uh, early observation, just scanning the possible Calabial sequence and that was possible to construct. But it became very interesting uh, when this was not an, became a statement not about isolated uh, Calabial threefolds, um, but um, of families of Calabial threefolds. So the picture would be that um, to really think of a family of threefolds uh, where you identify, so the mirror pairs are really mirror uh, fibers of these uh, families. And you would have the same uh, sort of underlying uh, base states, uh, which in this talk I will refer to as the modular states. 
but these two uh, families or these two vibrations are very different. So what is the thing? So of course, um, per um, fiber, you would still match uh, the Hodge numbers, but there was something much more powerful uh, to match, namely um, there's a local system or uh, there is a bundle, uh, a complex vector bundle over M together with a path connection that was matched on both uh, sides. And so here, the underlying physics is, uh, was developed by uh, Wolfgang, uh, Nick Warner, and Thomas Bafa. So there is really a meaning, a physical meaning uh, for what's going on um, in this uh, deformation space and how you can translate this into differential equations. So eventually, the math uh, statement is that you have a complex vector bundle together with a complex uh, side B with a uh, flat connection that is being uh, matched on both uh, sides, <clears throat> where uh, the meaning of what the complex vector bundles uh, are is uh, very different. Uh, and also the meaning of the path connection. So on this side, uh, so I'll refer to this side as the uh, B side. So this uh, will be a variational path structure problem together with a flat uh, Gauss-Wallin uh, connection. And uh, here there will be a, um, another flat connection which matches this one, which is the uh, quantum uh, homology. And the reason this is quantum homology is because um, uh, the power of mirror symmetry is that there is a distinguished um, trivialization uh, of this uh, vector bundle. And then in the distinguished trivialization using distinguished coordinates, you can look at the connection one forms um, of this um, flat uh, connection. And part of the data of the connection one forms is <coughs> what is called uh, F0, a uh, free potential depending on some distinguished uh, local coordinates uh, here, <coughs> which eventually, so there is some uh, generalization of all of these. But let me just uh, give you a flavor of what's uh, going on. So in terms of the local uh, coordinate, this uh, thing is uh, periodic. <coughs> and uh, the expansion uh, coefficients are rational numbers, and these are the genus zero. Roman Witten invariants with nothing to do with uh, X check, but rather with uh, X. So this is uh, Romo Witten, and so genus zero, Romo Witten. So that was sort of the, um, okay, very convincing in the work of Candelas uh, et al, where uh, this was worked out with a mirror quintic, and then uh, all Romo Witten grant for the quintic. Uh, okay, right, so there is um, a higher genus uh, generalization of this, so let, uh, let me introduce. Um, a formal uh, generating function with uh, an additional uh, formal uh, parameter that I'll call uh, lambda. So there will be a, a summation over uh, genera from zero to infinity. And then there'll be analogous objects uh, to this F, you call this uh, F and G. <coughs> and these will be in the same sense as this one, this formal uh, generating function of uh, of uh, genus uh, G uh, global written and right. Okay, so where uh, does this come from? So this was part of the data of the flat connection. Uh, where this comes from, yeah, you probably need uh, some more uh, construction. And this is also what I want to uh, motivate, namely you take the exponential of this. Okay, so what I should mention for the rest of the talk uh, here, really lambda is a formal parameter and the series is asymptotic, meaning you cannot, um, so it, um, it doesn't make sense um, in lambda or it has zero uh, radius of conversion. So that's why it's just formal um, for space. Okay, so this um, object turns out to be um, a limit of a uh, an object that you obtain from uh, some extension of this uh, setup. Namely, there is a process of uh, Geometric uh, quantization. And this is also uh, how I want to motivate this whole story, uh, spitting into uh, Hodge theory, which we have uh, heard a lot about. Uh, so there is a just a rigorous mathematical, or there should be developed a rigorous mathematical framework uh, for a process of geometric quantization. So these, uh, the fibers of both of these uh, bundles are uh, complex vector spaces, but moreover, they're Symplectic, um, and there are some real spaces uh, inside there. And there's a, a formal process of geometric uh, quantization that we can uh, apply to these um, real uh, uh, sub uh, vector spaces uh, of the fibers of these uh, bundles. 
So in a nutshell, what you get, so this is uh, most clearly stated uh, here. So you don't get a, uh, a bundle of uh, vector spaces, but instead you have a bundle of uh, Hilbert spaces. And then you also have a uh, flat uh, connection, uh, <coughs> which identifies neighboring Hilbert spaces over the same uh, modular space. And so uh, there is uh, two objects um, that are called Z topological uh, string. So attached to both uh, sides. So one of them on the A side attached to X, <coughs> which um, should also match uh, an object on the uh, B side. And both of these are flat sections of um, this um, unit dimension. So that's uh, sorry, sort of B2B and uh, <clears throat> yes. 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 Yeah. But but this is not. Yeah. Um, we have to talk about this later. So this will not, not be relevant. Okay, so this is uh, one side uh, of the story, and then uh, Sutra also um, told us that um, there is a the homological mirror symmetry uh, conjecture of Gintsevich. Uh, and now let me phrase this uh, this way: so we have um, 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 in that context, you're identifying categories uh, associated with X and X uh, check. So roughly four hidden sheaves uh, on uh, X will be identified with uh, Lagrangians of um, X uh, check. But now we're again in the isolated uh, case, so there is no uh, family here. And it turns out that also from a, a mathematical physics uh, perspective, matching the whole categories is um, too much. So uh, what you need in order to both uh, get back the moduli space and also to look at sub uh, categories is the notion of uh, stability. So there is which is, which is match is stable uh, for and sheaves using some distinguished uh, stability condition, and these should match special uh, Lagrangian. And so again, there is uh, enumerative geometry that you can associate. Um, so <coughs> stable Korean sheaves as well as special uh, Lagrangians, and these invariants will be called uh, Donaldson Thomas uh, invariants. And the uh, mirror symmetry will tell you, okay, if you have some uh, generating function of uh, the key invariants that you can uh, associate with an A here, uh, X, uh, then this should match also the enumerative invariants that you uh, get from special Lagrangians on uh, X check, given that the stability condition here is really the same thing that would uh, select uh, the special Lagrangian here. Okay, so the input uh, from uh, physics is that the sub uh, categories that we match here are attached to what are called uh, DPS uh, objects. So this DP uh, should match DPS objects in n equals two theory. So this is just the physical input that will tell you which object uh, to look for. Okay, and then of course um, the the question so um, here. Only one side had normative interpretation. So this uh, thing here um, gave rise to homo Witten theory, but there is no normative in, uh, information on the B side. Here, uh, there is really normative information on both uh, sides. However, um, what was understood uh, some particular in the last uh, two decades, there is um, the stability leads to uh, wall crossing uh, phenomena. So some objects are only um, stable in certain uh, regions uh, of this uh, M. <clears throat> and uh, there is also a physical uh, object which is supposed to give these uh, partition functions. And so there will be some formal partition function of DPS. Both of these should be obtained from the corresponding thing there. Um, and then the question is, of course, about uh, what is the relation between Z from Witten and Z uh, DT? And so there is a relation on this uh, A side. So Z Rome of Witten of uh, X is conjectured to be the same thing as Z DT of uh, X on the same uh, Calabial uh, manifold. So this is equal to uh, Maulik, Nekrosov, Unkov, and Panda. Uh, 
And there's a physics uh, counterpart um, that will tell you that the Z DPS becomes for compact Fabial geometries as the uh, black hole that is related to the cosmological. Okay, so more recently, so this is only for some um, set uh, of the T invariants, so not all of them. More recently, so and this is where it applies to the work of uh, from Bridgen. So from Bridgen formulated really um, from uh, the wall crossing um, problem of the T invariants. So, and the T invariants associated to some abstract setting of LWL3 uh, category. Um, so, this led um, to a uh, rigorous formulation in terms of the Riemann uh, Hilbert problem, which could be uh, formally solved. Yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, not not yet, so not for what I've done. So um, I'm only looking at the vector multiplet uh, modernized space. But um, very, very good question. So it turns out um, that um, the dependence on, on lambda typically sees uh, the other. Okay, very good. So what um, Alfred is uh, asking, so I've already, um, part of the theme of this uh, workshop is um, uh, Hodge theory, so variation of Hodge structure on, on this level. Uh, here and uh, variation of hot structure, I probably only know about genus zero uh, from a width invariance. If you uh, construct mathematically this uh, quantization uh, problem, then you also know about um, higher genus uh, from a width invariance. But uh, a priori variation of hot structure does not know about um, DT invariance, so it seems. Uh, but yeah, so um, from this and many other works, it seems that there is um, data of DT invariance, uh, which is really hidden. In the dependence um, on this formal parameter. Um, okay, so Bridgen, uh, there was a, a wall crossing of DT, and in some uh, cases, uh, the solution of the Riemann Hilbert problem also gave uh, all genus uh, Romo Witten uh, theory on the same uh, space. So the question is uh, whether there's also the, the other way around. So is there uh, a way to extract uh, information about uh, DT from? From Gromo uh, Witten, although uh, probably this has nothing obvious uh, to do with uh, Donaldson Thomas invariance, and that um, the answer is going to be uh, yes. And it turns out that um, there is um, <coughs> this uh, formal uh, generating function is bad as a series of lambda, but the badness in lambda uh, and how to cure uh, the badness in lambda encodes uh, information about uh, another set of invariants in the same manner. So this is the end of uh, motivation. Um, and let me now for the rest of the talk be very specific uh, and just stick to uh, one example because this is also the one example uh, where we have all the glory uh, details, but uh, the, the example is already, uh, it's simple enough to write down all the uh, glory details, but it's also generic enough um, to see uh, what, what kind of general structure so expect. And as you may have uh, already guessed, um, the example is going to be the result uh, 24, which has already appeared in um, many other talks. Okay, so uh, introduction means um, I'm going to introduce all the uh, players. So, uh, as I said, I will be very uh, specific. So, the pair of Canabial three folds uh, on the A side, this is going to be the, um, the total space of the rank four 
bundled over uh, V1. So this is the small resolution of the polyfold uh, singularity. And uh, the mirror uh, to this <coughs> will be given by the following space. So it will be given by an equation. Uh, so all these uh, variables are in, uh, so these two variables are in C, and then there's two uh, variables in C uh, star, such that they satisfy uh, the following uh, equation. So this is one particular choice uh, of uh, framing of uh, the Hori uh, Bafa mirror. So Hori not mirror in Oh, yeah. So uh, before we uh, proceed, let me mention maybe a few things in order to tie some of the work uh, for uh, older uh, work. Uh, maybe so this um, this space is a, a conic uh, vibration, and there is a further uh, thing that we obtain when this uh, conic uh, degenerates, maybe when either of these uh, coordinates is uh, zero, there is another uh, curve that you uh, obtain. So that's the space x, y, and uh, c star, where just uh, this equation is. Uh, I should say also q, capital q, is the exponential of uh, q pi uh, t. <clears throat> and this will be thought of uh, the t here, or the q will be uh, considered here as a complex structure the formation of the underlying uh, uh tree. So this is called the uh, mirror curve. And there is um, this uh, work of Aganajic and uh, Blankhaus, then Marino and Vafa of uh, back in the days. Uh, there is a formal process of uh, thinking of, uh, so again, here C star and square, this is syntactic uh, space. Um, and there is a natural syntactic form, so you can also look at the formal quantization uh, problem uh, here. So this is what these guys did, which amounts to um, acting on a Hilbert space where these two C star variables uh, do not commute. And then uh, you can associate with this an operator acting on states of a Hilbert space, and there is a quantization problem. I think back in the days. It was thought that this quantization problem is related uh, to the one uh, leading to the uh, logical string, but it turns out that it's not. Uh, but it is related in other interesting, yet to be uh, fully understood uh, ways. So maybe that's just a side everyone. So there's a quantization of a curve uh, associated with this uh, mirror. So that is mirror pairs. But for the moment, we'll just stick uh, to the A side. So this is where we'll have Gromov Witten. And out of Gromov Witten, we'll get Donaldson Thomas of uh, X. But there's interesting links uh, to the other side as well, which I will only mention in time. Oh. OK, so the mirror pair. Now let's look at um, C uh, Gromov uh, Witten, or let's uh, look at what F. So log of Z uh, Gromov Witten is uh, for uh, this uh, space. So in general, so not just for the uh, result polyfold in general, this will be a classical piece. So this is a polynomial of uh, degree uh, three in uh, T. <clears throat> and then there is some uh, contribution of uh, constant maps. So this does not uh, depend on T at all. And this is universal for any LBL uh, threefold. It's just the same. Uh, expression at every genus um, just multiplied by the Euler character. And then there is uh, a thing which uh, changes with uh, every uh, <coughs> labial threefold, which I'll call uh, F. Right, so F tilde was uh, determined uh, from physics in early days uh, by uh, Gopar Kumar and Valpa uh, <coughs> using a duality with so the Simon's uh, theory, and uh, so Rupert Kumar Vafa uh, gave an expression, maybe not in this uh, form, but uh, essentially that's uh, the expression. Before I write down the expression, let me recall uh, some special functions. So there is 
a poly uh, logarithm uh, with uh, index uh, s, and s can apparently be any complex uh, number. One way to introduce this is in terms of a, a power series, um, for example, from n or infinity, z to the n, and then n s. So this uh, expression is only convergent to z uh, smaller uh, than one, but you can analytically continue this. So this is also interesting uh, branch nets. So that's the fully uh, logarithm. So, and this feature is uh, very prominently in this expression, namely you have the first term is the uh, fully logarithm with index uh, three of the field. Then you have a term uh, which doesn't have any lambda independent of one minus two. And then all the other terms starting at genus uh, two have the same uh, structure. Thanks. So these are fully logarithms three minus uh, two G of two. And the Bernoulli numbers um, are obtained from the generating function. So that's a, a sort of the old orders uh, expression. And then if you uh, spell this out, then you look at the rational coefficients. These will be the normal written invariants of uh, this uh, space. So everything is fully uh, determined. And moreover, you see that the series uh, is asymptotic. Uh, if you look at the growth of the Bernoulli, uh, sorry, there's a factorial missing here. But even with a factorial uh, downstairs, this series is still asymptotic. <laughs> so it doesn't, it only makes sense as a formal power series. Um, however, also due to work of uh, Gopak Moore and uh, Bafa uh, later, it turned out that in general, there's a procedure of uh, <coughs> resumming or uh, writing down instead of a series um, in lambda, just taking, packaging the same information and writing it down as a series in exponential of i. Gopak um, Moore and Bafa, resummation of this sort of thing. Uh, quite this as F and D, lambda and T of the same uh, geometry. And for this uh, geometry, it looks uh, like the following. So, and uh, you know, the integer that's here, uh, which is one, uh, that's the integer invariant um, of the same uh, geometry, which is the Kupak Marabafa. So this is the uh, invariant of point zero and degree uh, one of this thing. Right, so now uh, you can look at this expression and now this is not uh, formal anymore in uh, lambda, but you can actually think of this as a meromorphic function where lambda becomes uh, complex, has uh, infinitely many poles along the uh, real line, but otherwise it's fine. So if you were to ask okay, what happens with the lambda, uh, anywhere else in the complex plane, you can take this uh, expression. Uh, a physics question would be, okay, is this expression a non-perturbative uh, completion of this thing here? Uh, and non-perturbative completion mathematically, you should think of um, as some underlying analytic function of your asymptotic uh, series expansion. And uh, uh, the answer, which I'll give you uh, in a uh, few minutes is uh, also yes, but in some a uh, precise uh, sense. Wait, so let's see. this. Okay, so let's uh, move on. Um, so um, one one question that I think um, so on the Gromov Witten theory at uh, genus zero is completely determined by the flatness of the um, variation of uh, hot structure connection that you have. So one thing that I was uh, long looking for is whether there is also some uh, flat connection that extends in the lambda direction, whether there is any differential equation in lambda that this uh, thing uh, satisfies. And it turns out, uh, so maybe there uh, is, but uh, what I was able to find at least in this very simple example from the asymptotic uh, expansion, <clears throat> there is a nice properties of these um, poly logarithms under derivations that you can use. And you find that there is uh, something close to the differential equation in the uh, a different situation. So 
one that's uh, a very short uh, paper of my theorem generalizing uh, some instruction from logical recursion. Uh, namely, that this uh, formal uh, series satisfies the following um, uh, finite uh, difference equation. If you take this and uh, shift e by lambda divided by two pi, so I'll call this lambda check <coughs> in uh, positive and negative uh, directions, um, and subtract from this twice. So this is some uh, discrete Laplace type of uh, equation. Then what you get on the right hand side is something very simple: it's just log of uh, one minus two. So all of this is for the F. Uh, for the <laughs> okay, so this is uh, sort of the uh, equation satisfied uh, by uh, this asymptotic uh, series. Um, and now you can ask the game, but uh, just sort of finding another question uh, for uh, an answer that you already have. Uh, but the other question, as you know, also, if you have, as soon as you have the, the path connection uh, at genus zero, um, allows you to analytically continue also to look for uh, some analytic structure uh, behind this. Um, so maybe, yes. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I'll uh, skip uh, some uh, connections of this um, for other things, and maybe let me write a jump and fall. Uh, so that's uh, the difference equation. So from this difference equation, as I mentioned, so it was a different uh, question that your adversary can ask, which gives the same solution, but it also gives uh, more. So it turns out there is an actual analytic uh, function in uh, lambda, which also satisfies uh, this uh, difference equation, which is, however, uh, analytic in uh, lambda. So one way of uh, writing this is in terms of some uh, integral uh, representation. So this is the contour in the upper half plane avoiding uh, zero. <clears throat> um, and this particular integral representation is only valid uh, in some um, in some regime, but there's other uh, integral representation that you can give. Let me just uh, put in three minutes um, to give you Okay, so that is uh, sort of a that uh, this F uh, and T. So that's uh, something I was thinking. This uh, paper uh, satisfies this uh, difference equation star uh, as well. And uh, the, equa uh, the question is uh, what's the content of this? Uh, so there's this no particular, if you try to write it in this form, is it the same as FGD or is it something uh, different? And it turns out it's uh, it's something different. So it is uh, partly uh, FGD, which you see uh, if it were a simple uh, residue computation. But then uh, there is uh, another uh, part. Which is given in terms of some uh, other uh, partition function um, that I will not uh, mention uh, further uh, in this talk. Uh, but the relevant thing here is um, that in the other one, all the variables uh, appear, uh, so the lambda appears in terms of one. Uh, all right, so this is uh, a part uh, that I skipped. So the important thing is um, now it's um, some expression in e to the i lambda. As well as some other expression you need to the i one over lambda, <coughs> which uh, appears here. And this also, uh, this particular form of uh, putting uh, putting it matches sort of the general allure of um, the perennial uh, of what is called the topological string uh, spectral theory uh, corresponding. Oh yeah, so the question now is, this is a nice analytic function satisfying the same uh, difference equation. Is this now the non-conclusive uh, 
completion, or is this really the nice analytic object um, behind uh, Gromov-Witten theory? And the answer is again, yes, uh, but uh, only one of infinitely many other uh, possible choices. And uh, this will turn out also to be one of the one of the uh, choices. Okay, so I should mention for here, this is also um, this is um, triple sign function. So this also already appeared in a lot of work on uh, Chen Feynman's theories. Also by then in the paper, there was some you know, works using this function. Also, not the physics work. Uh, so this was not a new thing, uh, but it's sort of um, the new insight was to see that it satisfies the same. Um, uh, difference exists. And they could have uh, gotten it as an analytic solution of the same problem underlying the asymptotic extension. All right, so let me skip a few things, but at least mention uh, one other thing uh, that we have uh, since then understood, which also applies to our uh, work of Hans. Uh, namely, once you have identified this as another solution of uh, this equation star, it turns out that there is another, so there is, uh, so F and P, also uh, satisfies another um, finite difference equation that I call star star. Namely, uh, whereas um, in FGD, uh, everything in P appeared uh, in the exponential, so it was manifestly integer periodic. F uh, NP is no longer integer uh, periodic. But instead, uh, there is some inhomogeneous uh, term uh, appearing, which you can write in the following way in terms of the dialogue. <laughs> and uh, here uh, in the argument, there is again something suppressed uh, by one of our uh, lambda. So this will be quite uh, important. And the punchline of the talk, which will quickly uh, progress uh, to. So, okay, so you had a difference equation, you found some analytic solution. Is this distinguished uh, in any way? And it turns out yes, but there's infinitely many others. And this is uh, what you can systematically uh, get from uh, studying Borel, the summation of uh, asymptotic uh, series. So, let me just uh, give a two minute uh, overview. So, if you had an asymptotic series uh, in lambda, with some coefficients uh, a n, lambda to the n starting in zero. So a typical uh, source of these uh, series uh, being asymptotic is these coefficients go uh, factorially. So then you have zero radius of uh, convergence, which for example, we just put in here the n factorial uh, uh, see immediately. From that, um, what you uh, can do is look at a uh, Borel uh, transform where instead of the variable lambda, you introduce a new variable uh, zeta and just take the same coefficients <coughs> and uh, divide by n factorial. So the shift here, this is the convention about the uh, shift, both dividing by n factorial and n minus one factorial exist in the literature. And then you hope that uh, this is a series uh, or this is a power series that has some finite radius of convergence. And when you have this, um, then you also uh, can look at what is the analytic continuation, and then you hope to get some meromorphic uh, function. So if you have this, then you can go back to something that is lambda dependent, which will be called the Borel sum of uh, pi in terms of the original variable, which is uh, then obtained by reversing term by term this uh, factorial, which you obtain in terms of the Laplace term. And uh, the last transform is naturally uh, done along the uh, real line. 
But sometimes um, what you get here is a meromorphic function that has uh, singularities along the real line. So you can allow yourself um, so take any uh, semi-internet uh, ray in the complex uh, zeta uh, plane, and you'll call this the royal sum in the direction of uh, zeta. Okay, so this is uh, something that we uh, did um, with, uh, so this is um, so I'm building on uh, work of Karolidis and Ashai. So you can take the asymptotic series, which was the form of Witten uh, generating function, and then explicitly look at what the world transform is. And there's lots of uh, work you have to do there, but you get uh, an explicit expression for what the uh, Borel uh, transform uh, is. So let me uh, just uh, maybe not write down um, all the details, but this is the moment that is uh, this. And uh, there's some other uh, term with uh, reverse the uh, side. Okay, so why I wanted to uh, write this uh, down. So there's a sum and uh, and the uh, integers. And uh, here you have manifested something that is meromorphic and zeta and uh, holds um, at uh, the following uh, values of uh, zeta. So it's uh, for all uh, times by i and p plus k times uh, <coughs> m. And here both, uh, so m is uh, any non zero integer and k. Wait, so you have something uh, uh, meromorphic uh, Borel uh, transform. So now you can ask um, how to get the Borel sum and what is the good uh, analytic function behind uh, all this story. If you look at where uh, the singularities uh, are, then uh, you'll find that there is infinitely many uh, singularities along uh, some uh, rays, and uh, these accumulate from both uh, sides to the positive and uh, negative imaginary uh, axes. So what you can do now is uh, you have to avoid, so along all of these infinitely many rays, there's infinitely many singularities. So what you uh, need to do is uh, define this Laplace transform by avoiding these uh, rates. So each one of these is labeled by some integer uh, k. So this is uh, this uh, integer k, and the integer m is giving us um, the infinitely many singularities along the ray. So what you can do is uh, just define some <coughs> half-line uh, row anywhere in between these. For example, uh, row k would be lying between k and k uh, minus one. And now the question that you can ask is, um, if I do this um, Borel sum in two different ways, avoiding uh, the singularities on the ray uh, uh, k, so on let's say before and after the ray, what is the what is the difference between the two analytic functions that I get? So first of all, what you get, uh, if you can write down this, is something that is analytic in a whole uh, half plane. And uh, this is what I will end uh, the talk with. So I'm writing delta uh, L uh, K. So this means the difference of the Borel sums uh, of uh, F uh, go uh, lambda K. The difference of the Borel sums uh, along two different rays uh, before and after this uh, singular line. And this is uh, something that we uh, computed and is given by the uh, following. <laughs> All right, so here, uh, what you should uh, recognize that this, and these will be called uh, Stokes uh, factors, because they uh, connect the analytic functions, which are which have an overlapping uh, domain of analyticity. But if you want to extend this, then you have uh, overlapping uh, functions, and you can interpret the whole thing 
that the exponentials of these are really not functions, but sections of a line bundle. And these are the transition functions of the line bundle. What I wanted to point out, so this is also the inhomogeneous uh, term uh, of uh, double star. And there is a dual uh, equation. So if you have these analytic functions, you can, uh, well, this is the S duality part. First of all, if you have these analytic functions, you can expand in one over lambda the whole thing. You get a different asymptotic series, which again has its own uh, Borel transform, and it has its own singularity structure, and it has its own Stokes uh, factors. And the Stokes factors of the dual, so that's uh, obtained asymptotic series in one over lambda, and uh, the dependence on p becomes uh, p over lambda. <clears throat> the Stokes factors are related uh, to the inhomogeneous terms of the first uh, difference equation. So it seems that the two uh, difference equations that you get uh, know about the Stokes factors of the corresponding other uh, asymptotic uh, expansion. But this is not uh, yet S duality. So S duality is something uh, that is still in progress, um, namely for duality or some full modular uh, structure. So here you only have the inversion. For a full modular structure, you also want some object that is invariant under integer uh, shifts. And this is something that you can obtain by taking products of these analytic functions over the whole half thing. And uh, maybe let's, uh, let's just mention this. So then uh, what you get from all of these, uh, so products of uh, Z is related to what is called an uh, elliptic uh, gamma function. It was studied by uh, Feder and Varshenko uh, and many other people. And this in particular suggests that um, the topological string coupling is not only a formal parameter and not only a complex uh, parameter, but it also has modular uh, structure of some modularity that has yet to be understood. Okay. So I think Questions, anyone? This this whole thing. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um I, I see what you're saying. So I think um the Stokes uh, automorphism, if you um <coughs> is if you look at the exponentials uh, of this, so we yeah, so we interpreted this as uh, a different uh, normalization. So you get then the difference or the ratio of uh, z uh, rho k plus one divided by z uh, rho k is then given by the exponential of this. So we interpret this as transition functions in this uh, line bundle. Um, but I think uh, you should also should also be possible to write this down as a uh, automorphism acting on these uh, objects. So it's 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 much uh, much clearer if you don't work uh, with uh, the topological uh, string. But then if you do the resurgence uh, program, what we did with uh, Lotte and uh, Ivan, that relates uh, to the quantization of the mirror curve, because then out of the f what you obtain is what is called the Boros uh, symbols of the exact WCD um, of the mirror curve. Um, and there on the Boros symbol, you know, so again, combinations of these factors will be the uh, Stokes automorphisms acting on the Boros. Yes. Yes, I, I think so. So uh, what um, what you're pointing out. So there is, uh, so I mentioned at the beginning, okay, there's a, a complex vector bundle um, that's over M and there's a flat connection, but uh, what has been understood, so I'm sorry, the flat connection here is not a single one, but there's a whole family. Uh, so there's a family depending on a complex parameter uh, zeta. 
So there is a that PT star connection where part this data was at modulus one, but later it was understood that this data can be extended uh, to a whole of P1. And what we want is then to look at the twister family <coughs> where you extend uh, this. And then this connection, this extended connection to where you lift the vector bundle uh, over M uh, times P1. This has uh, Stokes phenomena at uh, zero and infinity. So zero and infinity are irregular singular points of this connection. And um, sort of this is the underlying uh, object uh, which um, ties in nicely with uh, water crossing uh, phenomena. And at the end of the day, I think, yeah, so the Stokes phenomena in this connection should be related to the water that you were discussing. But this is only sort of uh, but what I should be and do, but this is not as far as I know. This is not the way. Uh, so I think that this particular one is. Uh, uh, so I think there is work of Alba et at all, where um, there's within Trent Simons theory, where some of these can be obtained with limits of some kind of a fixed cycle. Uh, but um, I think I even know. Yes. Uh, very good question. So I think uh, yes, but not uh, that I know. So again, so what, what I discussed is only these. Uh, uh, sorry. So here, the enumerative uh, interpretation of this. Um, maybe so. Thank you for asking. Uh, so the one that was here was also the Donaldson Thomas invariant uh, corresponding to a particular uh, sheet. Uh, whose central charge is this thing. So this is interpreted as the central charge corresponding to some uh, lattice element, and this is the uh, Thomas invariant. So all the jumps have um, uh, enumerative uh, geometry interpretation in PT theory. Um, but if I understood correctly, so what you're asking is um, uh, all the other things, if you look at the asymptotic expansion, so all the infinitely many here and the asymptotic expansion in lambda have the same, just give you the same global width. Thanks also for asking. There is a limiting Borel sum along the imaginary axis, which gives you on the nose just scope of Mamata without. And so all of these additional corrections are the sum of these um, jumps. But there is another interesting thing, namely, if you look at the analytic thing and expand it in one over lambda, then it looks like it wants to be interpreted. So it's one piece is again from a Whitney theory of uh, X, but there's additional pieces which from their structure look like an amorphous geometry of open uh, global width. But I don't know. So then the question is, what is the estimable uh, topological thing seen on the same uh, geometry? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, great question. So that's um, that's what we looked at with a uh, lot of Holland. So what I mentioned earlier is just from the mirror construction for, and this is only for long compact uh, Clavier three folds to get the notion of a mirror curve. And the quantization of the mirror curve leads to a different uh, operator. Uh, however, the difference operator is in the um, in the variables of the curve. Okay. Uh, the difference operator that I have is on the moduli uh, space, so that doesn't have any reference to a curve. Uh, however, uh, the difference operator that I uh, wrote can be, again, if you write it in the exponential, can be written as uh, the, the following. So acting on um, uh, something uh, called uh, so E. Uh, yeah. So there is some object that you can obtain from the topological string. Um, and then uh, the equation becomes this. And this, again, looks like a quantization of a C star. Uh, uh, an equation in uh, C star and squared. And uh, what I think 
would be the general story is that um, you have a priori uh, difference uh, operator in, on the curve. And uh, part of this uh, difference operator structure can then be translated into the model. Or in other words, the uh, curve defines a quantum mechanical uh, problem where the uh, moduli are fixed or the moduli are the analogs of, of energy levels in uh, some complex energy levels. Um, and then I think what's going on, but um, yeah, so there's lots of indications of this, is um, that uh, the, the difference operator is then a quantization of the same uh, problem if you work in the right variables. So if you get rid of the curve dependence, as you will do for the harmonic oscillator by going for sine and cosine, and then you only have um, uh, variables which are, um, uh, what are these called? Uh, action angle uh, variables. So then the quantization of the symplectic space becomes a quantization of another symplectic space, which is better adapted to the problem. In other words, uh, also the object that you get here, you can think of these as uh, the analog, the higher genus analogs of periods. Uh, so the, um, the object on the curve, uh, which satisfies the difference equation are analogs of uh, Albert Jacobi uh, maps. And uh, this is the analog of uh, translating what the Albert Jacobi maps uh, satisfy or what the period or what the higher genus um, deformations of the period. 